Hi folks, um, so what we're going to do in this uh, video here is we're going to introduce the topic on Onshape, which is a 3D parametric modeling uh, software that is actually free online, okay? Um, so this is very much an introductory video. So in the video, what we're going to be doing is very briefly going to talk to you some little bits about the keyboard and about the mouse and how we can use those effectively. And then we're going to start off by modeling this object here Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit kind of about some, uh, a little bit on best practices and some little tools or little tricks that we're going to learn. Okay, so we're going to learn about sketching on uh, surfaces or planes using the line tool, dimensioning tool, um, extruding add in this video where we'll get on to remove in another video and then uh, some extra little tips and tricks. Okay, in these first kind of series of videos. Okay, so starting off here. Um, before we even get into the on shape, at, at this point, you'd have all set up an account. Here's our keyboard. I'm going to refer you to some kind of buttons that are important here. And here is obviously the mouse. Now, in relation to the keyboard, some important uh, buttons that you might not be aware of. This button here in the top left is known as the escape key. Okay, that is really important uh, later on. You'll hear me refer to it in the video. It's on the top left. It's always titled with ESC. Um, it basically allows us to deactivate whatever tool we're using at that moment in time. Okay, uh, let's say we made a mistake and we wanted to delete something. Here's our delete buttons, usually one that says maybe, it's, sometimes it actually says delete here and then it's like a back arrow here, depending on the keyboard that you have. But you'll usually find it here, if you follow the numbers, one, two, three, all the way to nine, zero, you'll see a button there it might have an arrow going to the left and then it might say delete here or vice versa. Okay, uh, that allows us to get rid of something maybe or undo something. And then we have the enter or what's known, sometimes known as the return key. This sometimes will have a little symbol that kind of looks like an arrow as well. Okay, that's going to be helpful to us because it allows us to accept any change that we might make. And then over here on the, this uh, kind of bottom left hand corner, we've got this button here, which says control. Okay, now on your keyboard, it might say CTRL, which is what I've written in over here. Okay, this is my, what, what it might say there. And then we've got the letter Z. Now, these two little buttons together are a very helpful little trick, okay, uh, if you ever want to undo something. So if you hold down the control button, CTRL, and then press the letter Z once, it will let you undo whatever step you have previously done, okay? And if you hit that two or three times, it will keep going back in steps, okay? Now we're going to quickly talk about the mouse as well. Uh, on the next slide here, I've got a little bit on the mouse. So in relation to a mouse, a computer mouse, you have two, two primary buttons. You've got the left click button and the right click button, okay? Now the left click button is your main button, okay? It's at the top left of the mouse, okay? That's kind of like your primary uh, button there. And you're generally going to use that with your kind of index finger, okay? Your middle finger on your right hand is generally the one that you would use for a right click button, okay? Right click is generally secondary function. So 90% of the time you're going to use left click, okay? You also have this little kind of black marker here in the middle. That is to notify of a wheel, okay? Uh, it's a scroll wheel. It's going to allow you to zoom in and zoom out on your object. And it also acts as a button as well if you press it down, okay? And uh, I'll explain about that in a minute when we get on to actually modeling the object, okay? Some things I'm going to just refer you to here. So in regards to the mouse buttons, left click is to select, to select functions and options. And when you click it, you only click once. You'll see there, just click and let go and let the mouse button go. Do not click the left click button and hold on to it. Click it, let go. Okay, that will activate whatever you're doing. Do not hold on to it. As I said there, do not hold the button down. Um, when we're in a sketch, it says double. Now, when we're in a sketch, we'll double click it really fast to activate a sketch. And then a right click is to get secondary functions. So we get into all of those as we start modeling. Okay, so that's just some little bits there on our tools. Okay, our keyboard and our mouse. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start modeling. So to open up Onshape, what you're going to do is you're going to open a new tab here. You're going to type in the address Onshape dot com to bring us then to uh, a window which will allow us to log in it's just going to take a few seconds there okay computer is very slow tonight apologies give it another go on shape.com Yep, here we go. Okay, now you can see here, uh, the last day previously in a class, we might have set up a student account. So now this time what we're going to do is we're going to sign in. So if I click sign in, 
you're going to sign in with whatever email you use to set up your account and you're going to sign in with your password now i have my own email set up and i'm going to log in there with my password okay and click sign in and now what that's going to do is it's going to bring me into kind of my home screen where i've made lots of little objects here okay so you'll see here yours might be empty at the moment but a lot of little different things that i've made over the over time are all populated inside in this area here okay now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get you to refer to this guys up here you might see your name here on the right hand side now if you click on that you can obviously select the sign out we're not going to select that now what i'm actually going to select is my account now in the my account the area I want you to go to is preferences. So if you select preferences and in this preferences section, you just want to make sure that in the units here. So if I'm scrolling down my wheel, move rotating the wheel down, or you can grab this handle over here and pull it down. I want to make sure that my length unit is in millimeters. Okay. Very important. This, this uh, decimal places, it doesn't matter three or two. I might have got you to change it to two. It's absolutely fine. But make sure if it's millimeters. If it's not millimeters there, and let's say it says inch, then you want to change it. So you change it from inch to millimeter. And very important, then you come down here and you click save changes. Now, mine is already in millimeter, so I'm not going to actually change anything. The next thing you want to do is in relation to the mouse controls, where it says solid works, you want to change that to on shape. Okay or sorry, if it says on shape, you want to make sure that that says solid works, apologies. So make sure that that says solid works. Okay. Once again, save changes if it's not there already. Okay. Now to get back out to the home screen, they're the only changes you have to make. You can click on this little on shape up here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a drawing and we're going to start by modeling this object right here. Okay. So first of all, before we start that, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to click on this create icon. And then I'm going to click on create document. Okay. Now what I'm going to call it is I'm going to call it on shape practice um, tutorial. Okay. I want to model in lots of different things in here. So on shape practice tutorial one, if you want, you could also call it object practice. Okay. Absolutely fine. Okay. I'll actually call it on shape practice and click create okay now what that's going to do is it's going to bring us into the modeling screen here i'm going to talk you to through a couple little bits on the modeling screen now okay and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to refer back to my mouse okay so if you look at the scroll wheel here this scroll wheel is the one i'm going to use so i've got a wheel here that i can rotate forward and back okay now you can see with my little cursor the little pink arrow in the middle of the page this little odd guy in here this little dot that dot there if you see it if i click on it you can see it's after highlighting over here that is called the origin okay that little dot okay if i select this guy here where it says front you can see it's after coming in an orange that is my front plane if i select anywhere else on the screen i can deactivate it. if i select top that's my top plane okay so everything i select here is actually over here in this area this area here is called your design tree so when we start modeling, this area is going to start getting bigger and bigger with little things that we do. Okay. Select anywhere on the screen. And then the last one, if I want, I can select the right plane. Okay. Now all of those are planes. They're like sheets of paper. I can, if you come over here and you can see them, you hover over any of them, you can see a little eyeball symbol. Let's say I wanted to, uh, to just hide the top plane. I can select the eye and it's hidden. And you can see here it's gone. I can do the same on the right. And all I'm left with then maybe is the front. Now, it doesn't mean they're not there. It just means they're hidden from view. So to activate them again, click on the eye. There it is. Click on the eye. There it is. Okay. That's your design tree here. Okay. Inside here is your modeling area. Okay. Your parametric modeling area. Now I'm going to talk you through a couple little bits. So if I usually when you're rotating or zooming in and zooming out, it's very important that you hover over the model when you're uh, zooming in and zooming out. Okay. To zoom in so it's very important because if i start zooming in and i have the, the cursor key over here it the actual object will start to go off my screen over in this direction okay you can see here actually if i do it that way you can see the way it's kind of going off there okay so what you want to do is you want to make sure just put it back in here this little viewing cube we'll get onto that in a second so with the mouse if you hover over the middle and rotate the wheel forward you can see it's zooming out and if you rotate the wheel backwards you can see it zooms in so when we actually make something, we can zoom in and zoom out to see the object closer or further away. 
okay? So that's how you zoom in and zoom out, okay? If you press the wheel button down, okay? Actually press it down like a button and hold, okay? You can see on the screen there, I've got a red um, circle there. It's because I'm holding the button down. And now I rotate the mouse or move the mouse around. What that's actually going to let me to do is so they're going to allow me to kind of pan the object and I can move it around, okay? If I wanted to see the bottom face or the top face and so forth, okay? So that kind of lets us move it down, move it around, provided we have the third or the wheel button pressed down, okay? Once again, zoom in, rotate, sorry, zoom out, rotate the wheel forward, zoom in, rotate the wheel back towards you, okay? If I ever want to get back to normal, this little viewing cube is helpful, but if you click on this little cube here, camera and render options, and click on isometric, it'll bring you kind of back to normal then, okay? That's kind of a little helpful trick there. So, um, also you've got this here, when we're done modeling the object, I can view, uh, I can select different faces and the object to look at the top of it, the left of it, the front of it, uh, kind of an angled view, the side view and so forth. And down here, I've got various other options as well. We'll get into those as time goes on, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna talk to you about is just up here along the top, these are quite a, lot, quite a lot of what are known as our features, okay? But before we actually start using any features, we actually have to start to sketch. And you can see this little sketch icon here, okay? So we're going to use that in a second. Now, here's the object we want to make, okay? We've done the topic of orthographic projection at this stage, and what we have to do is we have to draw an elevation in the direction of arrow A. Now, we know that we would see this face here, there and that little bit there. So essentially that's the sketch I'm going to draw, okay? I'm gonna try and draw that sketch. I'm going to do it roughly first and then I'm going to apply dimensions to it, okay? So we're going to try and draw that view there because if we do that view, we can kind of make a 3D version out of it, okay? So I'm gonna roughly draw that and then I'm going to apply dimensions that are on the drawing here to it. So what I want to do is when I'm doing an elevation, I'm usually drawing on the front plane, okay? So I'm going to deactivate the top plane and I'm going to deactivate the right plane. And you can see here, all I'm left with is the front plane. So what I want to do is anytime I'm starting a sketch, very important, you select the sketch icon, left click once with the left click button, just let go, click and let go. And you can see here, it's saying select a sketch plane. So I have to select a sheet or something to draw on. Okay. And I can select that two places. I can either come over here and select front and it'll go in here, or I can select it here. Okay, I'd advise you to get into the habit maybe of selecting, it doesn't really matter at the very start, you can select it here or here. Um, as time goes on, you'll probably end up just selecting from here. Okay, so I'm gonna select front here, and you can see here front plane is after going into our box. And what you'll notice over here on our design tree is we have now started a sketch one. Okay, and you can see another box has come around it, and that box is titled sketch one. Anytime I'm drawing though, I want to draw as best I can looking straight at the object. So we're drawing on the front plane. So I'm gonna come over to my cube here and I'm gonna select front. Okay, now I'm ready to start drawing. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is you'll see some of the tools up here have now changed. These are my drawing or what are known as my sketching tools. I'm gonna to start off with a line tool, which is this guy here. If you hover over for a second, it'll tell you underneath what it is, okay? That one's saying center rectangle. If you select the arrow, it'll give you more options and so forth, depending on whatever you're using, okay? But for today, all we want to start off with is the line tool. So when I left click that, you can see there, it's after highlighting blue. I'm now active on that, okay? You can see the cursor has changed as well. It's a little cross symbol. Now, notice how lines are coming out there. Basically that guy there, as I said to you previously, is called the origin. Very important, anytime you start your sketch, Majority of time, you're going to start right on the origin. So if I want to start on the origin, I want to start off by drawing a line. So I'm going to left click once and let go. Okay, so I'm going to click, let go. Okay, do not hold the left click button down, just click and let go. So click, let go. And you can see here, I can start dragging a line anywhere I want. Okay, I want it to go perfectly vertical. Okay, you'll see here when it goes perfectly vertical, a little symbol will come in beside it, a little uh, kind of line symbol. See, it's not vertical, now it's vertical. I'm gonna drag it up to about here. When I'm happy with it, click. Now I can continue that line. Okay, click. Gonna continue the line down, make sure it's vertical. Click, drag a line across. Make sure it's horizontal. 
you'll notice when it maps horizontal once again you're getting a little symbol with it there you can clearly tell it's not horizontal and notice how the little symbol comes in with it yeah it's saying perpendicular click now i want it to go vertical click click just one click that's all now this one is really important i want it to be the same distance down as this point okay so if i want it to be the same distance down you can see here it's not really mapping onto it i want it to be the exact same so i'm actually going to come over here just hover over this point don't click do not click drag across and you'll see it'll actually map the same distance down drag over click drag down and you can see here it's mapping back to the origin click and then bring it home click and there's our object and you'll notice because the object has gone closed now it's kind of an enclosed area inside that area has kind of gone a slightly darker gray okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to apply some dimensions but before we do that i'm just going to show you a little trick let's say when i was sketching i'm going to start i'm still on my line tool you can see here it's still active if i want to deactivate that i can click on it again it is now on it's not it's now inactive but let's say i had it active and i had a line and let's say i clicked and i dragged up here and i clicked and i clicked and i came down here and let's say i went like this okay and i realized oh made a mistake there so i want to deactivate my line tool and what often happens is students will click and click and click okay and they'll get a series of lines kind of going here and they're like oh my god what's going on okay so i want to deactivate my tool to deactivate your tool if you press the escape button at the top left of your keyboard it should deactivate for some reason mine's not deactivating there escape line there we go uh, it should deactivate. So if you press the escape tool, it will deactivate. Now, a couple of little tricks here. You can come up here and you can click, look, undo. Okay. And that will undo everything that I made a mistake on. Okay. I can also do control, hold down to CTR button on your keyboard and press the letter set. There we go. Okay. So that's just a little couple of tricks there. Now what we want to do is we want to apply a dimension. So to get a dimension, I come up here to this dimension tool, this one with the little two arrows. I'm going to click on that. Dimension is now active. So I'm going to go back to my sheet. I know that the height of that line there is 75. Then it goes over 25, down 50, over 50, up 25, and so on. And the overall length is 125. So using my dimension tool, I'm going to select the baseline. So click once, let go. Then drag down click again straight away it's going to prompt you to put in a measurement so i'm going to press delete and go one two five and press the enter key there we go you can see it's after bring it back in press front to kind of bring it back into the middle now i'm going to select this line click let go drag out okay try and make sure your dimensions in the middle it doesn't really matter but i always try and keep it neat and tidy click again then press 75 enter Notice how the object is slightly changing. The height of this section, click, drag out, click, 25. Okay. Now, this line here, I know it needs to be 50. I'll accept that. Now, notice how, watch this, it's this dimension here. Watch how these ones are black, whereas this one has gone slightly gray. Now, I did not need that dimension. Okay, that is what's sometimes known as a driven dimension. I'm actually going to click on that on the outside, not the number, and I'm going to click delete. It's now gone. The reason I put that in is because I just wanted to reference to it. Because I've got the height here of 75, and I've done this height of 25, which is the same line here going across here. The computer already knows then that the height from here to here will be 50. It's smart enough to calculate that it knows it's going to be 50. Okay? Now, notice how our lines as well are going from black or blue to black. That is because our sketch is starting to get defined, okay? They're going to start sticking into, into place. So, the distance here now, I need to change this to 25. So, I can select that line, drag down, want it to be 25. Notice how, once again, it's starting to get darker again. This line here, I want it to be 50. Drag up, 5, 0, enter. And then... What I also want is I want the height of this line, these two lines, to be 25. So I'm going to select one of them, drag out, and I'm going to make this 25, enter. 
And then the last little bit is I'm going to make this line here 25. Now I could select the line or I could select this line, drag over and select this line. And it allows me to select the space between when I select the two. That's just another way of doing it, 25. And what you'll notice is you'll actually see that my sketch has now gone from, full, from blue to fully dark, fully black. It is a fully defined sketch. Now, the next thing I'm going to get us to do with the sketch done, I'm going to get you to select this green arrow here and watch what happens to the sketch. It's going to go from black to gray. Okay. I'm actually going to click on the box here. I'm going to go click on the corner to give me a 3D view of the sketch. You can see the sketch is in 3D now. Okay. We still have our front plane active. So I, I can look, I can hide that if I want. You don't have to, you can have it on if you want and it's annoying you, you can turn it off, but there's our sketch. Now, Little trick, just going to refer back to our object here. It says here, um, left click to select functions and so forth. But this little option here, double click to activate a sketch. So that means double left click. I should actually type that in there. Double left click to activate a sketch. Okay. So let's say I had the object. I've got the object done. We just need to make it 3D now. So on the on the actual sketch here you can see here it's titled sketch one if i double click if i click once you can see it's just after going orange but if i come over here and double click really fast click click the sketch will reappear okay where i can change and edit the sketch if i made any errors if i'm happy with the sketch obviously i can just accept it but i want to do more so i want to do more work to it so if i double click it it'll reactivate now the next thing i want to do is i want to come up here to this tool it's called extrude select it and what you'll notice is it's now gone from a 2d sketch to a 3d object with a little arrow in here if i click on the arrow and hold left click on the arrow and hold and drag out you can see i can make the object bigger now notice as i drag out how this number is changing watch how the number changes even as i drag it in okay and that's how we can actually change it so we're in an extrude here now. I'm going to go once again, I'm going to go through that again. So back here, I'm going to select extrude. Now, what we want to do is we want to, it's a new object, okay? So that's fine. Now, we want to change the dimension here, the depth that it comes out. Rather than kind of pulling the arrow and kind of getting the, get or guessing our measurement, we know the exact measurement we want to come out. And it's the width of the object, which is 50 millimeters. Okay, so it's that 50 there. Now, I want to change my depth here. I'm going to type in, okay, double click it to activate it, 50, and press the enter key on your keyboard. Okay, or alternatively, you can click the green arrow. Now, that is exactly 50 millimeters now. So now that I'm happy with that, I want to accept that with the green arrow. And there is the object done. Okay, now at this point, now that we actually have something made, if you, if you refer back to orthographic projection, what does the front view look like? You can click on front and there we go. Just zoom out a little bit there. And there's the front view of the object. If I click on these little arrows here, I can rotate around to what the right view looks like. It looks like three steps. And then if I want, I can see the 3D view of it by selecting corner or the top view by looking up here. Okay, so I can actually look at all of the objects uh, with, the uh, with the wheel on the mouse. If I rotate it back to me, it'll zoom in. If I rotate it away from me or rotate forward, it will zoom out. Okay. And then if I click with the mouse button or sorry, with the wheel, click with the wheel and hold down, I can obviously spin the object around as I want. Okay. Let's say I want to look underneath it and select the bottom face there. I could do that. Okay. Then to kind of bring it back home, bring it in there. I usually select the corner here, brings it in nice and uh, centered on my screen. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do really quickly and i'm just going to refer to it here before we finish the video we talked about left clicking right click to get secondary functions now i'm going to add a little bit of color to the object like you would maybe with orthographic projection when you color in the elevation one color end elevation one color and plan view another color okay i'm going to do that on our object so if i click on this surface here you can see it's after going orange but if i click on that and then I'm actually going to right click now. So with different button on the mouse, the right click button, just click once, let go. It's going to open up this kind of box here for me. Okay. And you can see it's kind of other, other functions. So you can see here, add appearance to face, assign material for part, edit appearance for part. I just want to add appearance to the face. 
So I'm going to click on that. Left click now. It's going to bring me into kind of a little uh, color wheel here. I'm going to select a red. Okay, when I'm happy with that, click the green arrow. Okay, I've got red on that face. Now what I want to do is I want to get the end elevation. So what would I see when I look in from this side? So I'd see this face, I might see this face and this face. Okay, so I'd see those three faces there. All of those I'm going to give a color. So I'm going to select one of them just to start off. Select this one, right click, add appearance to face. And this time I'm going to go with, I'll go with a green. Notice how this one has just changed. Now, if I want to do any other faces, look here, it says face of extrude one. If I want to do another face, I can just select it. And look, it's after going in here. And then I'll do one more, select it. When I'm happy with those three faces, green arrow. Now, the last face I'm going to put a different color on is this one. Right -click, you don't have to have clicked on it first. You can just right click on it straight away. Add appearance to face. This time I'll go with like an orange. Uh, maybe orange isn't the best. I'll go with... I'm just thinking, yeah, and I'll go with a pink, that kind of color. I'll select this face, this face, and this face. Click the green arrow and accept. And there's my object. When I look from the front, I see all the red faces. When I look at it from the right view, I see all the green. And when I look at it from the bird's eye view, I'm seeing all the pink. And there we have it, orthographic projection. But what we have done here now is we have used 2D drawings to create the object. Okay, or in this sense, we actually just you took it from here. Okay, but that's your first video there, guys. If you can get through that, uh, we're going to go on to this video, uh, or sorry, this object in the next video, where we're going to remove a part, and then you're going to practice objects three and four, then maybe on your own. Okay, so hope you got a bit of something from that. You can get practicing on that there.